So here's another radio for the shop. It's a Stern Sonnenberg and it's been here once before in somewhere in 2014 I reckon. And um, well, little Adrian did an okay job of replacing the capacitors in here and it's been working ever since. So why is it here? Well, it doesn't have FM and ever since the AM radio stations got switched off in Germany in 2015, this thing is pretty much useless. You can use it via the phono input, but that's about it. And um, the owner asked me if I was kind enough to retrofit this thing with FM for him. And I've done this before, so I said yes, and that's why the radio is here. So step one is, of course, to solder the little FM receiver together. Here we go. Here is a quick look into the back of this thing. You can see it's very basic. We only have one, two, three, four tubes in here. Of course, it's only mono and it's just AM. So um, we've got loads of space here, maybe to fit that uh, receiver in here. But, you know, I'm kind of a fan of doing these retrofits neatly without anyone noticing. So let's take a look underneath if there is any space in there to, you know, hide it even better. The way this thing is tuning is quite unusual. You can see as I twist the knob here, we don't have a tuning capacitor which opens and closes, but we have ferrite cores and there is a second one over at the other side which are slid in and out of a coil. Now, that brings one problem with it, and that is the distance between one end and the other end of the scale is not a half revolution of the tuning wheel. You can see when you take this spoke here, it's almost a full revolution, maybe a little over three quarters. And that's a problem because the tuning on this thing here is made through a potentiometer which is doing a half revolution from fully open to fully closed. So, in order to neatly cobble this thing together and link the tuning of this to the tuning of this, we'll have to go with some kind of a contraption to reduce the amount of rotation down to a half revolution. Now, we could go onto this large wheel here and make a reduction, but that means that the other wheel would have to be even larger. And well, I mean, I could put one right here, but it would be blocking most of the view. Um, then I've noticed that right below here, there is a second wheel where all these ropes are going off to the ferrite cores. And that is a lot smaller. And by doing advanced mathematician, um, I think we can make the second pulley for the potentiometer 35 millimeters, put a string across it, and that should work. Actually, you will need to see this in real time. I'm right now reducing 50 millimeter down to 36 in one pass. Here we go. Like a glove.
As for the contraption itself, I'm of course going to have to mount this somewhere solidly and then have the pulley able to spin onto it. So um, I think because we have to do quite a bit of building, we're going to have to take the chassis out of the housing in order to be able to work on this. Oh man, if only I already had a bracket lying about that would fit in here somewhere perfectly just so I could mount the potentiometer conveniently. You mean like this? Oh wow, it fits right here. And look, there is already holes drilled just in the right places so I don't have to fiddle with it. Great! Now of course I drilled some holes. It's one of the things I hate most but it had to be done. There was no convenient way of mounting something with the existing holes or capabilities inside this, so I just quickly made this thing. It's seriously two bends and three holes. This one isn't even necessary. And I drilled two holes here and there, and this is going to mount over here. And then we can tie a rope between this spool here and this one here. As for the string to connect the two, I'm going to have to experiment about a little bit with what I have and see what I can achieve with it. I was thinking about maybe giving this two turns around so it's got more surface to grip. And then on this one there is a hook right in there which I can maybe tie this to somehow. It's going to be fiddly but uh, there is not too much force to be transmitting here so hopes are high. Alright, I found a way that works. It's not the prettiest contraption, but as I said, it works. You can see I've even put a spring in here and I had to tie it to this rope because otherwise it would interfere with the coil here and rub on it and, well, that's not cool with wire that thin. But yeah, it does indeed work and I've made myself a mark here on the wheel which you'll probably not be able to see but uh, I use that to confirm that the thing does indeed make a half revolution which is exactly what we want. So now we can proceed by soldering wires to this potentiometer and then solder it to this and I'm going to temporarily hook up a speaker to it and see if this thing works at all because I don't want to be making myself all the effort of mounting this somewhere nice and neatly only to find out, oh it doesn't work, I'll have to take everything back apart again. In order to link this thing to the potentiometer, I'm going to solder three long wires to it and that means I can put this plate up into the radio on top and then link it with wires to this thing. Hey, you! Hmm? Yes, you! Tired of winding wires all day? 
Introducing the WireWindomat 3000. Snip your wires, one end in the vise, one end in the chuck, and crank like a madman. Producing results like you've never seen them before. Doubles as a hand crank drill too. Any resemblance to a hand crank drill, purely coincidental. This is what you would call an experimental setup. Although I did uh, permanently wire a couple of things in here. For example, the connection between the potentiometer and the thingamabob here, that's permanent already. So is the power supply. And the speaker wires will, when it's in the radio, of course, not be connected directly to the speaker, but to the amplifier first. However, for testing things out, this is going to do just fine. So I'll plug this thing here in. We're hooked to 6.3 volts. Let's see what it does. Nothing. Okay. Oh, there's something. Uh -huh. Is that cool or what? I mean, <laughs> of course it's quiet right now through this tiny speaker and all the power is coming from this tiny PCB, so you can't expect too much. When I turn the volume up, then you can hear it starting to tone quality decreases. However, you know, as a proof of concept, I would say this is brilliant. We seem to be at the end of the range over here. You know, this is the last station and then there is the end of that side of the spectrum. And then right over here this should be 88 point something, that's the other end. So I don't even have to do any adjustment here. This is already, well, tuned if you will. So next up we can figure out a point where to put this and how to wire it into the circuit of the radio. Cool! You can see we have five wires to take care of and each one of them comes with its own special difficulties. The easiest one will be the antenna. Taking a look at the rear plate of the radio, you can see the antenna is supposed to be plugged into a socket right here. And that's right down in there. It would usually be easy to reach, however some idiot put a bracket over here which looks like quite a bit of hassle to take off. So it's going to be fiddly to get that one attached, but we'll get it done. Next up, the speakers. Usually, this circuit is designed to be hooked up directly into a speaker. However, I want to boost the low output power of this thing by using the amplifier in the radio. And that's going to be done by soldering the contacts of the PCB into the record player circuit of the radio. That means we're going to run this thing with no ballast load over here. And that's not good long term. It's like revving your car in neutral. It, you know, it can be done, but uh, you shouldn't. So I'm going to have to cobble up something to compensate that. And last not least, I thought this is going to be the easiest part, hooking power up to this thing. My plan was use the filament voltage of the radio, 6.3 volts AC, rectify it to roughly 9 volts, and use it to power the damn thing. However, this radio is a little bit special in that it doesn't have a transformer. All the filaments of the tubes and the scale lights are hooked in series. And you can see here that those are supposed to be 18 volts each. So, I can't just go ahead and wire this thing in, it will explode. 
I'm going to have to come up with something here as well to reduce the voltage and have it, you know, set to somewhere around 9 volts DC output. Right, I've got the antenna wire hooked up. As for the ballast load for the speaker wires, here is what I did. Basically it's just a 4.7k between the two speaker wires. And then just for good measure I put a 22 nanofarad capacitor in line before hooking this line up to the record player input of the radio and this one straight to ground. In real life this looks something like this. The white line goes to ground and the green line goes right down in there. And then there you can see the capacitor and that goes straight to that one wire which goes from the record input all the way up to the switch. Next up is the power supply and for that I'm going to have to do a little bit of experimenting and here is where I implemented a huge logic error. You see I thought well there's 18 volts across this filament take those 18 volts, rectify them, put them through a resistor and voila we have just the voltage we need to run our little FM receiver. However it is several filaments in series and that means it's a bit like this several resistors which are fed off 230 volts AC. Now when I hook up a power supply to my FM receiver somewhere in this series then basically what I'm doing is adding another resistor into the circuit that means that the current draw of the whole circuit is different, the ratios between currents of the individual filaments is different, and therefore the entire equilibrium around tube voltages is going to get all thrown off balance. Also, have you noticed what it means to have all your filaments dependent on direct line voltage? Well, it means that Every voltage you derive of this circuit is going to have something to do with line voltage. Therefore, shorting one side of the FM circuit to ground will risk a half wave short depending on which way around you plug this thing in. So, I let the whole filament circuit be whatever it wants to, you know, leave it aside and then independently hook up a transformer. Luckily I had a transformer laying about which was quite small and which I adopted with a few resistors, the rectifier and the filter cap to do my purposes good. I was able to tie it down to the radio using zip ties and it wasn't too much of a hassle to wire it into the circuit. Now there was only a few things left to do. Since the record player input now doubled as FM channel, I would have to integrate some kind of switch to be able to switch the FM off whenever you wanted to listen to some kind of external input. And therefore I had to once again drill holes into the chassis. Lord of mercy, I'm a good person! Ah! <laughs> After that was done, I drilled yet another hole to be able to neatly mount the PCB. I decided against mounting it somewhere on top and I think it tucks away nicer below. Then a bit of soldering to get all the wires attached and then we're done. Get the chassis back into the radio, power it up, see how it does. Right, so here's the radio all back together again. 
I've come upstairs because the reception in the basement is just rubbish. So I've got an antenna here hooked up straight to my uh, bookshelf here. And now I'm going to demonstrate to you that this thing is indeed working and hooked up to this tuning knob here. Meine ich explizit nicht diese den Idioten von gestern Abend an der Der Abstieg von Schalke in Liga. Werden sich Technologiefirmen durch zu viel Regulierung abgeschreckt fühlen? So there we go. Um, it's quite a hodgepodge inside now with all the specialty needed to, you know, get this thing running in a radio that is a bit off the standard scheme here. But after all, it looks bone stock in the front. I was able to put the FM receiver in here with minimal changes and, you know, except for the couple of holes I needed to drill, it is fully reversible. So I'm going to let this thing run for at least a day and then in person bring this over to the owner and see if it actually works at his place and does not catch fire like the last one. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching as always and leave a like, leave a comment. I really appreciate it. Bye!